and a couple more uh, games to win on the road this week for UAB. Absolutely. Their coach joins us now as we go to their coach. I have to apologize to Cliff Ellis, who clearly had more than 50 wins as the Auburn head coach in conference. My bad, Cliff Ellis. Andy was going to correct you probably. Andy would have said, Brown, Cliff Ellis, go look him up, you young pup. How are you, coach? You doing all right? I love Cliff Ellis, but I love Jelly Moore. (laughs) <laughs> oh, Jelly's playing for I you. Want to talk about, let's talk about Jelly and, and uh, the way he is playing. Did huh? did you see this in in the uh, in the preseason? Did you know this was the type of player you had in him? I felt he was certainly capable. He's a dynamic playmaker, uh, and he can really shoot the ball. Doesn't take him much space. Uh, he's quick. He can get to his spot off the bounce. He's small, so so we we work diligently to try to create angles for him and then let him work as he's gotten more comfortable with his teammates and with our system. I think his decision-making has improved, uh, and as a result, he is, uh, he, is, he is playing lights out. I mean, how did you guys – I know he came from Tulane, but, you know, how does that whole process go about? I mean, what, what's the connection? Well, it's crazy. You know, I'm his fourth coach. Um, he started out he's, – he's from Long Island, and he started out with Kevin Willard at Seton Hall. And he left Seton Hall to go to Tulane back when you had to sit out a year. Remember those old days? You had to sit out a year. (laughs) Yes. He he had to go sit out a year at Tulane for Mike Dunleavy. And then Dunleavy gets fired. Ron Hunter gets the job. Now Jelly's there with Ron Hunter. He graduates, and then he comes with me. And he has two years because of the COVID year. Uh, He still has two years to play. So uh, we had a connection just through, you know, the networks of people that you build up over time. I think that, you know, the, the success that I've had with small point guards back in my Ole Miss days, um, it, for, for the old heads, they, 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 when they have a guy that can score and he's a volume guy at the one, typically I'll get a call. Uh, listen, I, you know, Clark Kellogg is really good at what he does, but I'm watching uh, the lead-in to the game on Saturday, and uh, they're pulling up uh, names of teams off the beaten path, not in the – not in the top of the rankings that they think can make noise in March, and they go North Texas. And I'm like, wait, 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 wait. UAB beat North Texas at North Texas. What about maybe UAB, Clark? Property, maybe he owns property in Denton. I mean, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you, you guys know better than any. Everybody's working an angle. That's true. <laughs> That's yes. a good point. You uh, Trying to make a buck, Coach. Your best wins have – you've been great at Bartow, obviously, but your best wins have been on the road at St. Louis, at North Texas, this, this last one at Louisiana Tech. Those are big, big wins on your resume. What's working on the road for you guys? You know what, I, I think it, it, with us, it, it allows us to truly get locked in and focused. Believe it or not, and we love playing in Bartow. It's been good to us. We've been good to it. And, and we hope as we continue to build some momentum, we can continue to build our crowds. And they've gotten much, much better as we've, uh, as we've moved into 2022. But when you go on the road, there is a, a singular focus. You know, you have their time, their control. Uh, you know, you have opportunities to meet a little bit. And, and, and our guys understand that in order to be successful on the road, it really is about us. And um, we've used that to our advantage. Coach Andy Kennedy is with us. He joins us on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. Coach is a big fan of this place, and Gus's Fried Chicken brings you, Coach. Uh, They are right there near UAB, uh, 2201 2nd Avenue South. 2201 2nd Avenue South. Grab some family meal on the way home. Feed the office for lunch. GusFriedChicken.com. That is GusFriedChicken.com. Uh, I know you told me on the show last time I brought up the net. You said you like the Ken Palm better. If I'm not mistaken, Ken Palm says your next opponent is the third best team in your conference. The record doesn't indicate that. Is Western Kentucky better than their record? First of all, shout out to Gus. Is yeah, outstanding. And and I like Bud Light as well. I mean, if you could work that. Into the- <laughs> That's one of our great sponsors. I, I yes. Bud Light Hotline. I mean, when you say that, you know, I, I get like a trigger in the back. But, uh, <laughs> Western Kentucky is terrific. They, you know, it's hard to win on the road. I don't care what league you're in. And they've dropped three in a row. They got beat by North Texas at home, which is unusual. North Texas went in. They really defend you, and they knocked in some timely shots. Then they go on the road to FIU, to FAU, long trip, Miami. You know, I'm not sure bed check is all that important when you're down there and you're playing in front of like 200 people. I don't know if you've ever seen the FIU court. But it's the most amazing thing you've ever seen. It's oh, like a have. mural. Yeah, it's it's incredible. I mean, like like you get four points if you hit it from the top of the palm tree. I mean, I don't really get the, I, I don't really I don't really get what they're trying to to do there. But 
I, I can understand, even though we, we played FIU at home this year, I can understand you kind of get caught up in the malaise and think we're going to win, and FIU hit 16 three-pointers and you lose. FAU, who is a quality team, um, who we had to make a, a huge comeback in the second half to beat in Barto a few weeks ago, at home, they're a team that is very dangerous. They popped them. So uh, I say all that to say we're going to catch a, a, a caged animal, one that's backed into a corner. They realize it, it's kind of do or die. They're sitting at two and four in the league. So they will come out really, really locked in. Rick Stansberry, he and I go back to the Mississippi State Ole Miss days. This is not his first rodeo. He, he's going to know what to do to get his team back firing. And they've got a, a dynamic point guard one of only two players in college basketball, and Davion McKnight, who's averaging over 16 points, six rebounds, and six assists. Uh, He's a truck at the one, and then they've got a kid at the five man uh, who leads the seven foot five. Yes, I said that correctly. Seven foot five. He leads the nation in block shots and dunks. So uh, they present a number of challenges. Uh, Coach, I never, I know you never want to lose a game, but you retweeted this yesterday, and I'll give uh, Blazer Ball credit. He was the one that initially tweeted it. I thought this was really cool, though. Teams who have not lost a game by more than two possessions this season, Purdue, Duke, Auburn, Arizona, Houston, Seton Hall, UConn, and UAB. I mean, that's, that's yep. pretty amazing. Well, you know, we've been in every game. And, and, and you know, we're, we're 12-0, and 0, I believe, in Bartow, and, and none of those games have been decided by less than double digits. So we've, we've done what we're supposed to do by protecting our home court, and we have been in every game. I you know, I, I, I felt like against West Virginia, it was an opportunity we let slip through our hands by our inability to execute down the stretch and score baskets. We led that game for 35 minutes, and, and we end up losing because we can't score consistently down the stretch. We did the same thing against South Carolina on the road, and we did the same thing against San Francisco. If we could have gotten one of those three, I think, uh, I think things look a little different for us as it relates to uh, uh, shininess of a resume. We might have could have... We might could have bumped Clark uh, to lean more towards Birmingham, <laughs> uh, but but we didn't. You know, uh, we didn't. We're we're in games. We didn't close. Uh, we've also had opportunities here as of late where where that experience has paid off for us because we're getting better as a team and we're certainly finding our identity offensively. I was at that West Virginia game. You just needed one one outside shot to fall in that game. We you just had... need one basket. You yeah. know, we needed we needed we needed one guy to, to step up and make a play, and unfortunately, we weren't able to do so. Yeah, open shots that just weren't dropping that day down at the BJCC. All right, all right. Before you go, this this part of uh, this part of the schedule, and you know, I don't necessarily want to paint you into a one bid league. Obviously, when you got Clark Kellogg giving love to other conference teams, and I think you're the best team in the league, possibility of multiple bids in the Conference USA. But um, it, you know, the, to control your own destiny, you got to win. Got to win your conference tournament. Between now and conference tournament time, you've done this many times at many different places. How big is the grind this part of the season? From right now, it's not new anymore. In conference, all the way until you get to the conference tournament, this is a mental checkup time for your team, right? No question. And and more than anything, it, it's a discipline of staying in the moment. And I know we all say that, and it's just hard to do, especially when the calendar flips over to February and and the NFL playoffs are, are dwindling down and the Super Bowl is come and gone. And now the casual fan starts perking up as they can start sniffing March Madness. So it's going to be a daily uh, jargon of who's in, who's out, who's on the bubble, this, that. We just have to stay locked into the moment. And I've got to do that, and I've got to make sure that our guys are doing that game by game by game. There's a discipline that has to that has to uh, grow within your team and stay locked in and, and controlling the things, as you said, Jim, controlling the things that you can, which are the next game. Uh, if you follow the NBA over the years, San Antonio has that rodeo road trip where they have to leave town for like 15 days when the rodeo comes. That's what UAB is in the middle of. At Rusty, Louisiana, at Bowling Green, Kentucky, at Huntington, West Virginia. <laughs> Mark, Mark Ingram rented the place out to a rodeo? <laughs> Mark Ingram is hosting a rodeo. <laughs> and Andy's Andy squad's going all over America. Uh, Coach, best of luck. We greatly appreciate the time. Thanks to Gus's. Thanks to you. And uh, good luck against Western Kentucky. Hey, I appreciate it, guys. All the best. All right, take care. We'll talk to you again soon. That is uh, Andy Kennedy, the head coach of the UAB Blazers, getting ready to play at Western Kentucky. Gus's World Famous Fried Chicken, 2201 Second Avenue South. Grab a family meal on the way home. Feed the office at work today with Gus's World Famous Fried Chicken. GusFriedChicken.com. That is GusFriedChicken.com. Coach with us on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. 